Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is talk about cryptocurrency mining and talk about the concept of implied odds. This video is for people that have graphics cards already, people that have mining rigs and they're mining cryptocurrency every day. Let's face it guys, the returns are low right now, they're very low and you know, you should be asking yourself, should I be selling my equipment? It's, it's, a, it's a good question to ask um, and a lot of people out there are saying, saying that this is the time to sell, you should be selling your graphics cards. But I want to give an imposing view to that and give you some food for thought. Um, so this could be a long-ish video guys, I don't want to rush over this because I want to delve deep, I want to look at different scenarios, I want to look at the prices and all that. Um, so don't expect a three minute video. So um, for the benefit, just very quickly, for the benefit of those of you who don't have graphics cards already, I don't think it's the right time to buy guys. Graphics cards right now are scarce and they're overpriced, you know, from a, a buying point of view, if you don't have any graphics cards. Um, and in a couple of months, say three months, if we make that assumption, three months, there'll be new cards coming out from NVIDIA. They might offer 20 or 30% more hash rate. We don't know the prices, we don't know how effective they are, but what we do know, do know is that the existing range of cards, your 1060s, 1070s, 1080s, etc., they're all, they're all going to come down in price. And you will make more money simply by waiting for those new cards to come out. But I want to give some uh, food for thought and talk about implied odds. Okay, so implied odds. Implied odds is a poker term. Um, you'll see it obviously used in uh, statistics, but it's popular. Um, it's a popular term used by poker players. Now, it refers to pot odds. And if you've ever played poker, you know what pot odds is. Um, you know, if, I, if I'm waiting for a card to hit on the river, on the last card, and uh, the odds of that card hitting a 5 to 1, if the pot is only giving me odds of 2 to 1, then I shouldn't call. So that's how pot odds work and it's really just about statistics and whether statistically you should call um, call a card, call the river, call someone else's bet. And you know, yes, you know, a lot of people don't realise that because you know, they'll, they'll win their hand and they think, yeah, I won with that last time, but over time, um, you know, even a hand that you shouldn't call will win from time to time. But Long term, if you if you look at pot odds, um, you will be more profitable. But there's also a concept called implied odds. Um, I, did, I did a search in Google there, and they say implied odds are an extension of pot odds that help you decide whether or not a drawing hand is worth calling in the face of a raise, especially the implied odds of a hand tell you how much you expect to win after your draw. A, a kind of simplistic way of looking at this is, say I'm playing two players, right? Um, One's a tight player, they don't bet much, and the other one's quite loose, they bet high, they call high. Um, now, in that scenario before, where it's like um, 5 to 1 for me to hit my hand, if the pot odds are 2 to 1, you know, going into the last card, fourth, you know, uh, the fourth card going into the fifth card, then I probably shouldn't call with a tight player. That player's a good player, um, if I over-raise them at the end, they will fold, so I won't get the pot odds I need, but... There is implied odds that the loose player will call it. Um, so, if I'm going to the last hand and I've got implied odds uh, of 2 to 1 for the pot odds of 2 to 1, but the, the, the card for me to hit is 5 to 1, then I don't have the odds to call. But, if I know that this player over here, this loose player, this bad player, will call ridiculous raises, then I can raise a really, you know, a really high amount and all of a sudden the pot odds are now 7 to 1 and the odds of me hitting the card that will make me win the hand every time, get the nuts, will be 5 to 1. So, this is kind of like psychology of poker. It's not guaranteed. Pot odds are guaranteed. You can look at the numbers and you could say, I, you know, yes or no, black and white. But implied odds, you're making an assumption that this player will call or they won't call, etc. And that's what implied odds are. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is not because I want to talk about poker. It's because you can draw a lot of parallels between poker and cryptocurrency, and I know some people say, yeah, it's gambling. No, that's not what I'm re referring to. I'm talking about the price of coins. Now, I saw this article, um, I saw this link the other day on Reddit, and I think this is really, really interesting. Um, it's entitled Bitcoin versus Alts Analysis 2015 to 2018. So, if you see down the left hand side here, they've got popular coins um, from 2015 to January 2018, so the start of this year. Bitcoin, Litecoin, um, Ripple, Dash, Digibyte, and Dogecoin. Now, in a bear market, when the market is down, Bitcoin went down 85%. But 
Litecoin went down 97%, 92%, etc. Now, they're all quite similar, but essentially, in a bear market, altcoins drop more than Bitcoin, right? That's basically what that's saying. Bitcoin's dropping, um, and you can see here, 65%, 68%. So, the altcoins drop more in a bear market. But, in a bull market, when the market is up, when, you know, everyone is buying, it's a little bit of a different story. This talks about um, bull runs, so a lot of different bull runs here. And this is where you have to, um, you need to take into account when you look at these figures here, guys, that this is giving you a select number of coins. I'm not saying it's biased, but there's a lot of altcoins that just disappeared and they didn't do well. You know, after a, after a bear run, they didn't go into a bull, uh, they didn't go to a bull, a bull run. But <clears throat> what this shows you is that in a bull run, Bitcoin doubled in price from, you know, 17th of March, 25th of May. Uh, Ethereum last year jumped up 25 times in price. Ripple 35 times, then you've got 13 times. Look at um, Neo 220 times it increased during a bull market. The price went up 220 times between April and August. It's insane. Um, you've got Monero 11 times. Um, Strat, I don't know what coin that is, sorry. Stratum. Uh, 95 times. Now, that's just using examples of what can happen in a bull run. So, the way that I'm looking at that is that in a bear run, when everyone's, you know, holding their coins, that the, um, when the market is down, sorry, Bitcoin decreases. Every coin decreases, but Bitcoin seems to decrease the least. Now, in a bull run, Bitcoin, you know, has maybe doubled in price, but there's a lot of altcoins that have went more than double. They went 10 times, 20 times, 100 times what the previous price was. We saw that last year with Ethereum. We saw it with Neo. We've seen it with Litecoin. We've seen it with a lot of coins. Now, it is worth noting, put a little asterisk here, there's a lot of altcoins that don't do that. They don't hit a bull run and they kind of just fade into obscurity. Um, but the reason I'm talking about this, the reason I'm talking about implied odds is because the coins that you accumulate right now might not be worth a lot. But when we had a bull run, if you have a good portfolio of altcoins, you could be, I'm not going to say lucky, but if you select the right coins, your coins could increase. You know, when Bitcoin doubles, your altcoins should increase by two times, by five times, by ten times. We don't know yet, but this is the concept I'm trying to get over. So if we rewind just now, and I'll just look to what to mine, right? So I've got 30 GPUs. I've got... Um, 24 1060s, 1080 Ti's, but those are different cards, so I think it's it's worthwhile examining them separately. So I'll take those away and I'll just keep the 24 1060s. Um, in fact, I'll I'll take I always take the electricity cost off because it's fixed. Um, right, so we can see here Ethereum. What we got here? Ethereum is the most profitable coins for my rigs. Eighteen dollars. It's pretty low. Um, now. As far as what my cards are worth, my cards still sell for like £250, right? I think, realistically, I'd be able to get £200 from them. £200 I, I will be able to get from my cards from selling right now. So, I can make, say we round up to $20 and just for, you know, uh, for simple maths, say that's $600 per month I will make with my 24 cards, right? Just say, 20, say it's $600 just to make it simpler. Um, so that's six hundred dollars I'll make with my cards per month, and let's make the assumption that the new Nvidia cards are out in three months exactly, right? Three months from today. So what that means is I will make eighteen hundred dollars in the next three months from these cards, six hundred dollars a month, right? That's assuming these prices stay the same and all that, right? Which they won't, but let's make that assumption. We need to, we make we need to make some assumptions here, guys, because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um, so, my my cards, I've actually got, um, in fact, what have I got here? I'll tell you what I've got. I've got the Palette, Palette Dual uh, 1066 gigabyte. So, let's see with it. So, you can see my cards still sell here. Like, these are the cards I've got. They sell for like £290. You can, they sell here for £275, right? So, that's new. That's if you're buying new. And this is one of the reasons why I said, if you're buying new, it is hard to get a bargain. Um, but... Let's say I was selling the cards. How much would I get for these cards? I don't know. This is the thing, you know. I'd maybe get two hundred and twenty pounds. I'd maybe get two hundred pounds. I don't know. Let's say I could sell for two hundred and twenty-five, but then you take away PayPal, you take away 
whatever. For simplicity, say £200. Say my cards that sell for £270 here, I can get 200 second hand because they are used, right? So let's make that assumption. I could actually get more. I, I do acknowledge I could get more. I don't think I would get much less. I think it, I think that's realistic. So £4,800, right? Um, and if you plug that in to keep it all in dollars, $6,800. That's a lot of money I can make from selling. Now, that's obviously you go, wow, I should sell the cards. But that's not the real thing I should be focusing on. The real thing I should be focusing on is what would the price of these cards be in three months' time? In three months' time, what would these cards be worth? Well, there's a few things you need to realize here is that um, in a few months' time, if the new cards come out, the, val the value of my cards will go down in price. The retail value will go down and the used price will go down. Now, this is what we don't know, what the price will go down to. And we also don't know how effective the new cards will be. But let's say my my 1060 will be 25% less effective than the equivalent, like the 1160, right? So, it's, so I will be getting 25% less than someone who buys an 1160. But what we can also do is make the assumption that, well, when the new cards come out, my mings will drop in price, but I can still sell at that point. So let's make the assumption: three months to date, new Nvidia cards come out, and I just and I go right. I'm going to sell all my 1060s. What would they get? Well, you know, right now that my cards sell for 290. Realistically, you know the way the market is going, it wouldn't surprise me if this goes down to say in three months' time it went down to 225 retail, but say used it went down to 150, right? Maybe it'll be lower than that, guys. I, I, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but, you know, if, if I'm giving myself, if I'm saying it's 200, where I could maybe get 225, maybe dropping by 50 pounds is realistic. I don't know, it could be lower than that. Um, So that means that the value of my cards in three three months' time will be 3,600 pounds. But that isn't what we need to think about. We need to think about the difference. And in three months' time, if I'm saying I can sell for 200 now and only 150 in three months' time, well, really, we're talking about the difference in price. So we're saying in three months' time, the value of my um, my uh, my ten sixties will drop by twelve hundred pounds. And again, putting that in seventeen hundred dollars. So that's saying that the value of my cards will drop by seventeen hundred dollars in three months. Now that kind of ties in quite well because I'm saying in three months' time I'll make eighteen hundred dollars. But when you knock off my electricity costs, it's pretty much level. It's pretty much the exact same. You know, by and large, I'm making a lot of assumptions, guys. I, I know I'm making a lot of assumptions here. I'm, I'm maybe selling a little bit less, but may, you know, just now, but maybe selling a little bit more than I would later on. I, I don't know, but I'm just keeping things simple. This isn't really about exact figures here. It's about the principle um, of, well, obviously you have to look at exact figures, but it's about the fact that Roughly, roughly, because we don't know the future price, but roughly, the money I will make from mining over the next three months, if the prices stay exactly the same, then it will drop in value by that much. So you could argue that um, I shouldn't sell because that, but th there's a lot of things to take into consideration here, guys. To play devil's advocate, I could sell right now and buy coins, that's another option, and that's something you should also consider, that is something you should also consider, but as far as implied odds go, well, this is what I'm talking about, see that just now, see if you look at your three months of coins that you accumulate right now, say you accumulated three months of, of Ethereum, you're assuming that Ethereum will be priced the same in three months time, but it might not, you know, if Ethereum hits another bull run, if we all hit a, a new bull run, the, new, the coins that you accumulate right now, could be worth twice, or three times, or four times, or five times as much as they are just now, or even more than that. What I'm saying is that the implied odds are that if you accumulate a lot of coins just now, then those coins might not be the same value in a few months' time. If you had a bull run, they could be five times or ten times more. Um, now, with my 1080 Ti's, um, it's maybe not as pretty because the 1080 Ti's are worth more, but they'll also drop in price more. Um, so that's saying Verge there is $13.39, that's because Verge is peaking, but again, keep it sim simple, $10, Let just for talking sake, $10, that means I'm making $300 a month, $900 over a few months, 
Uh, and the card that I've got actually sells for a, a huge amount. Um, it's it's selling for a grand right now. I've effectively got six cards that are, uh, you know, they're worth six grand. No. Now, I, I don't know what I would get for these second hand. I reckon maybe 800. Maybe 800. But say worst case scenario. Um, in fact, give me, yeah, let's give me 800. Let's just for the benefit. 800. This works out exactly as before. 4,800 uh, for my 61080 TIs. Um, but again, it isn't about what I'll sell in a few months' time. It's what it will drop to. And I think the 1080 TIs will drop more than the 1060s. Because the 1060s are a cheap card already. 1080 TIs right now are a grand. But when the new cards come out, they're going to drop to like maybe 600 retail or maybe 500 retail. We don't know yet. And, you know, nothing would surprise me. Cryptocurrency is crazy and so is the GPU market. But, I mean, what, what would the assumption be that it's £250 cheaper? I could sell it for in three months' time. I think that's a fair assumption. Uh, you know, I th this is assuming that the new cards come out. Um, it might not be as much as that, but say I, I lose £250 per card over the next few months, um, that would mean that I'm going to lose £1,500 in value in three months, um, which is $2,100. So I'll be losing $2,100 roughly uh, over the next three months in value, you know, a pre uh, depreciation of the of the assets. Um, but I would be making $900. Now, that points towards me selling. That points towards me selling. But again, it comes down to implied odds. If I mined, you know, a certain coins during that period, during the next three months that then moon, you know, if I mined, I could mine new coins every week. And I have been actually been doing that every week. I've been mining different coins. Um, and I could mine particular coins uh, and one of those coins could double in price, one of those coins could triple in price. Um, and this is where implied odds comes from. It's not so much like in poker, it's psychology, but in Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency, it's more about not knowing what the future may hold. The market go, could go down even lower. And I can look in hindsight and say, why didn't I sell those cards? But we could enter a bull run. Graphics cards could be even scarcer. And, you know, if, if, the, if the graphics cards are really scarce in the market, my 1080 ties might not even drop down in value that much. We, we saw some crazy prices a few months ago. People paying £200 for a 1050 Ti when they were selling for like half that just a few months before. So we don't know what's going to happen. But that isn't the point of this video, guys. The point of this video wasn't for me to say, you should do this, you shouldn't do this. You know, do this, do this, do that, do that. I'm not trying to do that, guys. There's a lot of uh, factors to consider and there's a lot of factors we don't know about. We don't know how the cryptocurrency market is going to be in a few months' time. We don't know how a particular coin is going to go in the market uh, in a couple of months' time. There's coins that I think should have been up and have been down and the opposite. You know, coins I think, you know, Verge get hacked the other week and the prices went up. So the market doesn't always respond the way you think it should and we are in a bear run. So, you know, in, in, a, in a bull run, everyone thinks they're a professor. Everyone thinks they're a cryptocurrency expert because the coins that they bought have increased in price. But... I mean, if you look at that, you can see that if we do enter a bull run, we're going to see a lot of altcoins jumping up. And whether you pick the right coins or not, well, that's the gamble, you know, whether you've picked right or not. But it does show you that if you if you mine the right coins, invest in the right coins, then these implied odds, the implied odds are that, yes, you could lose money by not selling your cards right now, but if you use your mining uh, equipment to mine coins, um, for example, I've been mining Safecoin. It's not even on an exchange yet. If I use my cards to mine coins like that, and then in a few months' time, those coins go up in price, we can use coins like Ravencoin, etc., for example, and any other coin that isn't on an exchange, you know, that you can buy. But it is important, you know, to play devil's advocate to myself, it is important to note that if I had to sell all my GPUs right now, and, and I had to get a lot of money for them, what I could do is invest that money. I can either hold the money and buy graphics cards in a few months, or I could use that money to buy speculative coins. I could even split the risk and, you know, spend half the money on speculative coins. Maybe that is the best way to do it, or maybe the best way is to, to sell half my rig and keep the other half. But the reason I'm talking about all this is that doing nothing and not selling is a decision in itself. You know, it's, it's you know, it's just a big decision. It's just, it's maybe the easiest decision because I don't have to do anything, but it is a decision in itself. Um, now, selling is 
the safer route. I would say it's the safer route. It's definitely the safer route. You know, if you can get money in your hand right now, it is the safer route. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the most profitable route or that the route that you should go down. Um, these are the questions that I think every um, everyone with a, a GPU mining rig has been asking recently. The prices are going down. Why don't I sell? Because the prices of cards are still high. Maybe that is the smart move to do. Maybe you should sell. But remember, there are implied odds. And if you've got cryptocurrency equipment, if you've got GPUs, you could be mining coins right now that are only $5. But in a few, a few uh, months' time, they could be $50 or $60 price. But again, you could just buy those coins. There's a lot of things to weigh up, guys. Um, again, this video wasn't about me saying, do this, do that. I really, I really do say that. But at the very least, I hope I've given you some food for thought. Um, it's, it's interesting times. and it's, it's hard to make a decision in this kind of period because we're in a bear market. The GPU market is, you know, it's overpriced. We've got new cars on the horizon and we know they're coming. Do you want to go the safe route and sell your cars right now? Might, the safe route might be the smart route. It might be the most intelligent route to go down. But do you think all coins will go up? Do you think implied odds are at play here? Do, uh, you know, are you implying or are you bullish enough to believe that we're going to enter a bull run and the, and the coins that you're accumulating right now are going to do well? These are the questions you should be asking yourself, guys. I am quite bullish about cryptocurrency in general. And I do think that, you know, if you look at historically, after bear runs, you know, of course, you enter a bull run. And even if it's just for four or five months or three months or whatever, a lot of coins will go up. And if you've invested, um, you know, if, you, if you're using this bear market time, to accumulate a lot of coins, you could end up being uh, very, you know, having a lot of money and a lot of uh, a good portfolio when we enter a bull run. But I'll leave it to you guys. I'll leave it to you guys. This uh, this is a discussion. This isn't me saying do A, B, and C. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I hope I've maybe raised some interesting points. I'd love to hear from you that mine cryptocurrency, that have GPUs. And I have no doubt that you have been looking at the same thing. You've been pricing your GPUs. You've been looking on eBay and seeing, is it worth selling yet? I don't think anyone can criticize you if you did sell right now. But I don't think holding your cars right now and continuing to mine is necessarily a bad thing either. So thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And of course, the whole point of my videos is, you know, discussion. So please do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Leave a comment below. And if you've not already subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button. All you guys keep telling me to say that in videos and I don't. But yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And leave a comment below. I'd really love to hear what you guys think about this because it's a very interesting time um, that we're in just now. So thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.